in the early 20th century of the many crises facing civilization, the one affecting individual lives in all parts of the world is infectious disease. On a given year in this time, the number of people diagnosed each year with any one of just the 10 most dangerous diseases would number in the millions, and tens of thousands of those affected would not recover. For those living in such times, hope seemed quite far off, with each disease becoming more ravenous as our population grew. That is, however, until the invention of arguably the greatest life-saving tool ever created by modern medicine, vaccines. By the turn of the 21st century, those same 10 diseases have been nearly eradicated entirely. A study titled, Historical Comparisons of Morbidity and Mortality of Vaccine-Preventable Diseases in the United States, published in 2007 by Rausch, Murphy et al. in the New England Journal of Medicine, found that the average annual number of those cases has been reduced by 98% and the average yearly fatalities by 99.8%. Vaccine would go on to save the lives of countless people in that era, many of whom were only children. Now, the children of those children have grown to bear children of their own. And this new generation of parents has started a terrifying trend, turning away from the very vaccines that preserved the lives of their parents and grandparents. Now, why this is happening is exactly the question I set out to answer, and more importantly, find a solution to. Driven by a passion for science and medicine, as well as more coffee than I care to admit, <laughs> I spent countless hours researching this issue. Today, I would like to discuss with you how this issue affects our society as a whole, why educating parents simply isn't a solution big enough, and how without immediate action, our future may soon resemble a very bleak past. Now, some of you may not be convinced that this issue is one that warrants the unanimous concern that I am advocating here today. I would like to first start by saying that parents that refusing to vaccinate their children are a major concern for our society as a whole because the decisions that they make have the potential to affect each and every one of us. Vaccinations can only be effective if the vast majority of our populace receives them. This is what's commonly referred to as herd immunity. And each parent or individual that delays or refuses the vaccination of their children is creating small chinks in the collective armor of this herd immunity. And unfortunately, the trends in parents refusing or delaying those vaccinations are growing rapidly. In 2009, Owen, Simon, Ornstein, Descartes, and Halsey published a study in the New England Journal of Medicine that linked outbreaks of dangerous diseases to regions of Northern California and Central Ohio to communities where anti-vaccination symptoms are common. In 2002, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention conducted a survey that found that 10% of parents reported refusing or delaying the vaccination of their children, a shocking statistic in and of itself. However, by 2012, when researching his book titled Vaccines, The Debate in Modern America, Mark Larkin had found that that number had grown to 40%. You don't have to be a statistician to appreciate the significance of a 400% increase in only 10 years. Parents have chosen to forego vaccinations for concerns without basis, inviting the return of the horrible diseases that drove their parents and grandparents to the very vaccines they now distrust. There are steps that can and must be taken to help ameliorate such a grievous concern. Educating parents on the reality of vaccinations simply isn't accomplishing enough. Decisive action must be taken. A 2014 article by Charlotte Alter, published in Time Magazine, reported that when presented with scientifically proven arguments that vaccinations were safe, 
some parents were even less inclined to vaccinate their children. Now, how could such an obvious affront to logic be vitiating the ranks of parents all across the United States? Well, another article published in USA Today in 2014 by Jim Painter conducted a survey that found that 20% of American adults believe that doctors and health workers push childhood vaccinations even though they know these vaccines cause autism and other psychological disorders. A study conducted in 2012 by Bench and Saxon and published in the journal Health Psychology showed that the health and medical communities, when pushing the effectiveness of vaccines, the more credible their arguments, the more ingrained anti-vaccination sentiments became. It's clear to me that this ideology is too deeply woven into the fabric of popular media and social circles to be excised simply by well-rounded scientific arguments. This threat is looming far too large to merely be left to result itself. I believe it can only be confronted by mandatory vaccination schedules. Now, if you consider the possibility of mandatory vaccinations to be too extreme, then I invite you to explore with me the alternative possibility of leaving this problem as is. Choosing not to vaccinate your child, as well as permitting such a choice, is to invite the horror and death and devastation that preventable diseases once inflicted on the past. Vaccines have simply been too effective to be fully appreciated. I would be willing to wager that were you to approach a pedestrian on the street, they would scarcely be able to name the symptoms of mumps or rubella, polio or smallpox. However, those of generations past were all too familiar with such symptoms because they were forced to confront these tragedies face to face in their everyday lives. Parents today have the luxury of worrying about possible side effects of the polio vaccine rather than if their child will live past the age of 10 or ever walk under their own power. <coughs> Richardson et al. 2009 published in the New England Journal of Medicine a study showing that in one year alone, rotavirus vaccinations in Mexico reduced death from diarrhea amongst infants 11 months of age or younger by 41%. This is just one of many examples that can be pointed to in our world today, showing that vaccines are still doing the most good for the people who need it most. As it was in the past, the greater the population, the greater the number of people infected. And if the trans and parents refusing or delaying the vaccination of their children continue to increase at their current rates, those members of our society quickly becoming at the greatest risk of infection will be children and the elderly. The same 2009 study I mentioned earlier by Omar et al. showed that vaccinations have reduced measles from a one-time high of approximately 500,000 cases annually to a mean of just 62 in the post-vaccine era. Yet, in just the four-month span between January 2008 and April 2008, 64 cases were reported and all but one of those individuals were found to be unvaccinated. The unfounded concerns of the link between vaccines and autism not only put us all at risk by encouraging parents to avoid vaccination, but they also detract from the search for actual causes of autism. As I draw this speech to a close, I hope I have truly given each person in this room a sense of motivation. I hope you now share my sentiments on the scope of this problem and the sense of urgency that it warrants. This is not a fight against a parent's right to make choices for their child. This is not even a fight against this ideology. This is a fight for children, for the well-being of children. And that is why I implore all of you to contact your state representative, Sonia Anderson of Green County. Contact your members of Congress, such as Representative Billy Long, contact and write to Chairman Tom Harkin of the U.S. Senate's Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, or Health Committee. Please write, contact them, express your support to create a mandatory schedule of core vaccinations. 
I implore you, because this problem has the potential to impact each and every one of us, including our society as a whole. Because simply trying to educate parents isn't doing enough. And because it is our responsibility as members of this world today to prevent the future from suffering the tragedies of the past. It is not the parents of today who will pay the cost of their ignorance. It is their children and ours. Thank you.